Uh, we know that all of Scripture speaks to us today. What particular elements from the book of John do you think speak powerfully to our secular and postmodern world? There are many. The first, and this almost by way of flat-out contradiction, the first is that the book is openly, unashamedly, in your face, supernatural. There are many people in the secular arena who treat history as that which takes place in space and time and is caused and affects things in space and time, and it leaves no place for God intervening, which means that you have no place for the resurrection. Or in the Old Testament, you have no place for the burning bush or the miracle of the crossing of the Dead Sea. Um, John's Gospel is unabashedly, unashamedly supernaturalistic. And um, unless you come to grips with that, um, you, you're not going to be able to understand John's Gospel. It's not a psychological manual. It's not a feel-good book. Um, at the same time, it presents in its own categories uh, the, the fundamental uh, flaw, the fundamental wrongness, uh, namely unbelief. Uh, and that lies at the heart of a great deal of uh, secular commitments. Unbelief toward anything outside ourselves. We are our own judge. We, we, we view sin as a, as a, a social construct. Uh, we view unbelief as a personal choice, maybe even as a sign of freedom and maturity. Uh, and over against all of that, um, the, Jesus himself unambiguously teaches that uh, the, the worst slavery is the slavery to sin. And the, the, the worst um, shackles are, are, are the unbelief that fail to see what, what God has done and is doing. And uh, to see how all of that has been addressed by the work of Christ. If, if you actually come to see it, it changes everything. It changes not how you understand yourself and God, how you understand reality, how you understand your life, its purposes, its goals, its, its uh, the, the nature of, of faith as, as not uh, so, sort of a, a blind casting yourself on, on, on something mystical or mythical so that you can have pie in the sky when you die by and by. It's, it's none of those things. It's, it's grounded heavily in truth, and faith is a God-given gift to enable you to perceive and grasp and cast your life on that truth. And the truth is bound up with historic events, Jesus dying in space-time history and rising from the dead in space-time history, on which you must cast your life in self-abandonment, in genuine repentance, in genuine faith, in order to uh, receive eternal life.